Hello everyone, welcome to our class and the course on the ISLMBP model. In today's lesson, we will introduce the model. Our main reference is Richard Froyan's book, Macroeconomics. Check out our full course, Open Macroeconomics, the ISLMBP model, now available on Udemy at the lowest price. The course offers clear, in-depth lessons to help you master the subject. Plus, it's also available for our YouTube channel members. Interested? Find the link in the video description and the first pinned comment. In practice, all economies are open to a greater or lesser degree. This means that all countries trade with other nations. Therefore, there is trade and capital flows between different countries. Throughout our lessons, we will understand the effects of monetary and fiscal policies in an open economy. Fiscal policy refers to the taxation and spending policies that a government adopts at a given time. Monetary policy relates to the set of measures taken by the government to adjust the money supply to meet the needs of the country's economy. We will also study the difference in the effects of economic policies in an open and a closed economy and how different exchange rate regimes modify the impact of fiscal and monetary policy. Furthermore, we will examine the challenges between internal and external balance when a country adopts a fixed exchange rate regime. The Mundell Fleming model also known as the ISLMBP model, will be used to analyze all these issues. Additionally, we will explore how capital mobility influences the effects of monetary and fiscal policies, as well as other variables. The Mundell Fleming model, or ISLMBP model, is an open economy version of the ISLM model. In the simple ISLM model, with a closed economy, we have equation 15.1, which provides the condition for equilibrium in the money market, the LM curve where M equals L as a function of Y and R, where M equals real money supply at constant prices, L equals money demand curve which is a function of income Y and interest rate R, Y equals income level, R equals interest rate, and equation 15.2 which gives the equilibrium in the goods market, the IS curve, where S as a function of Y, T equals I as a function of R plus G, where S equals savings which is a function of income, T equals taxes, I equals investment, which is a function of the interest rate, G equals government spending. Thus, the simple ISLM model will simultaneously determine the nominal interest rate, R, and the level of real income, Y, assuming a constant aggregate price level. But then, what distinguishes the ISLM BP model from the closed economy ISLM model? The transition from a closed to an open model will not affect the LM curve, which represents the equilibrium conditions in the money market. The first equation, 15.1 LM curve, shows that in equilibrium, the real money supply, which we consider as exogenous, meaning it is controlled by the national policymaker, must, in equilibrium, be equal to the real demand for money. In reality, economic policymakers only control the nominal money supply. However, since we assume fixed price levels, changes in the nominal supply result in the same changes in the real money supply. In other words, with fixed prices, the nominal and real money supply are equal. The IS curve equation, equation 15.2, which provides the equilibrium conditions for the goods market, is derived from the equilibrium condition of the goods market for a closed economy, starting from equation 15.3, where C plus S plus T equals C plus I plus G. By canceling C from both sides of the equation, we have S plus T equals I plus G. This is the equilibrium condition in the closed economy model. In the open economy model, we will include exports, X minus imports, Z, that is, net exports, on the right-hand side of the equation. With this we get C plus S plus T equals C plus I plus G plus X minus Z. We should include on the left-hand side of the equation, private transfers to foreigners. However, for now we will disregard this to focus on the model itself. By canceling C from both sides, we get equation 15.6, which is the IS equation in the open economy model, where S plus T equals I plus G plus X minus Z, X minus Z are net exports, which represent the value of exports minus the value of imports. This is the contribution of the external sector to aggregate demand. Let's now move the imports Z to the other side of the equation. Since it is negative, it will become positive. We will also include the variables that each element of the equation depends on. With this, we can write the IS equation for the open economy as S as a function of Y plus T plus Z as a function of y and pi equals i as a function of r. 
Plus g is a function of yx and pi, where s equals savings, y equals continuum, tap taxes, z equals exchange rate, pi equals investment, g equals government spending, x equals exports, y x equals external income. Savings and investment are the same as in the closed economy model. It is important to note that imports are positively dependent on the income level, meaning that the higher the income level, the higher the imports will be. Imports are also negatively dependent on the exchange rate. The higher the exchange rate, the lower the imports will be. The exchange rate is the price of foreign currency in terms of domestic currency. It represents how much is paid in domestic currency for each unit of foreign currency. Domestic exports are imports for other countries, and therefore they depend positively on foreign income, Yx, and the exchange rate, P. An increase in the exchange rate makes foreign goods more expensive domestically, leading to a reduction in imports. However, this increase in the exchange rate will lower the cost of domestic goods in foreign currency, making these goods cheaper abroad. As a result, exports increase with a rise in the exchange rate. In an open economy, just as in the closed economy model, the IS curve will have a negative slope. Thus, a very high interest rate will result in a low level of investment. To satisfy equation 15.7, which gives the equilibrium condition of the goods market in an open economy with a high interest rate. The income level needs to be low so that imports and savings are also low, thus ensuring equilibrium in the model. On the other hand, with a very low interest rate, there will be more investment, and as a result, the equilibrium in the goods market, represented by the IS curve, will occur with high savings and imports. Since savings and imports depend on the income level, the income Y will need to be high to ensure equilibrium. Let's look at figure 15.1, where we have the open economy IS curve. We'll hold four variables constant, taxes, government spending, foreign income, and the exchange rate. These four variables are capable of shifting the IS curve, which is why we keep them constant. An increase in government spending, a decrease in taxes, an increase in foreign income, or a rise in the exchange rate all shift the IS curve to the right. An increase in foreign income raises the demand for export goods from the given country. A rise in the exchange rate encourages exports and reduces imports for a given income level, meaning it shifts demand from foreign products to domestic ones. A decrease in autonomous imports produces the same effects. All these changes are expansionary as they contribute to an increase in the country's aggregate demand. Naturally, if the reverse of these examples occurs, the IS curve will shift in the opposite direction, moving to the left, and the income level will decrease. In summary, the LM curve gives us the combinations of R and Y that ensure equilibrium in the money market, while the IS curve provides the combinations of R and Y that ensure equilibrium in the goods market. The BP curve gives us the combinations of R and Y that equalize supply and demand in the foreign exchange market at a given exchange rate. The open economy model ISLMBP includes a new curve, the balance of payments equilibrium curve, BP curve. The BP curve provides us with all combinations of interest rates and income that result in balance of payments equilibrium at a given exchange rate. The balance of payments is the record of all economic and financial transactions carried out by residents of a country with residents of other countries. Balance of payments equilibrium occurs when there are no changes in official reserves. We can write the equation for the BP curve as x as a function of yx and pi minus z as a function of y and pi plus f as a function of r minus rx equals zero, where y equals income, z equals imports, pi equals exchange rate, x equals exports, y x equals external income, f equals net capital inflows, r equals domestic interest rate, rx equals foreign interest rate. x as a function of yx and pi minus z as a function of y and n pi represents the trade balance. It refers to net exports, which is the difference between exports, X, and imports, Z. F, as a function of R minus Rx, represents net capital inflows, that is, the deficit or surplus in the autonomous capital balance within the balance of payments. Notice that net capital inflows depend positively on the difference between the domestic interest rate, R, and the foreign interest rate, Rx. An increase in the domestic interest rate relative to the foreign interest rate generates greater demand for domestic financial assets, such as bonds, compared to foreign assets. This leads to an increase in net capital inflows into the country. 
If the opposite occurs, meaning an increase in the foreign interest rate, the effect will be the reverse. Let's consider the foreign interest rate as exogenous. For didactic purposes, we will also not include the foreign interest rate in the money demand function, even though investors choose between foreign and domestic bonds based on their returns. Thus, the demand for money will depend only on the domestic interest rate. As shown in Figure 15.1, the BP curve has a positive slope. This means that when the income level rises, the demand for imports also increases, but the demand for exports does not. As a result, to maintain the balance of payments equilibrium, capital inflows need to increase, which will occur with a higher interest rate, for example. Factors that shift the BP curve. Increase or decrease in the exchange rate. Exogenous increase or decrease. In the demand for exports, increase, decrease in YX, decrease or increase in the demand for imports, decrease or increase in the external interest rate RX. The increase in the exchange rate will shift the BP curve horizontally to the right. Given the interest rate, which will determine the flow of capital, the higher exchange rate will require a higher level of income to balance the balance of payments. A higher exchange rate encourages exports and discourages imports. Consequently, a higher level of income is needed to stimulate the demand for imports to the level necessary to balance the balance of payments. For example, if there is an exogenous increase in demand for exports, generated by an increase in foreign income YX, or if there is a decrease in demand for imports, the BP curve will shift to the right. With the increase in exports, given the interest rate, a higher level of income and greater demand for imports are needed to balance the balance of payments. Thus, the BP curve shifts to the right. The decline in the external interest rate would also shift the BP curve to the right, since it would increase foreign income and, consequently, increase the demand for domestic exports. Given the internal interest rate, R, a decrease in the external interest rate increases capital inflows into the country. As a result, to balance the balance of payments, imports and income need to rise. It is important to highlight that the BP curve has a positive slope in the case of imperfect capital mobility, which we will cover in more detail in the next lesson. In this case, domestic and foreign assets, such as bonds, are substitutes, but they are not perfect substitutes. In the case of perfect capital mobility, domestic and foreign assets would be perfect substitutes. In this scenario, investors always seeking the highest interest rate would move in such a way as to equalize interest rates between countries. If a certain asset had a higher interest rate for a period of time, investors would switch to that asset until its rate dropped to the point of matching the rate of other assets. Therefore, with perfect capital mobility, we have R equal Rx. In this case, the BP curve would be horizontal. On the other hand, if assets are not perfect substitutes, their interest rates do not need to be equal. One of the factors that make foreign assets imperfect substitutes for domestic assets is the risk differential between assets in different countries. These risks arise, for example, from changes in exchange rates, transaction costs, and lack of information about the specific characteristics of foreign assets. With that, we conclude our class for today. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.